when it comes to long-term care, uh, I have to say both liberals and conservatives have been stubbornly uh, uh, holding up this system of long-term care where private profits reign uh, reign supreme, and that has to stop. I don't believe that it's the structure that's the problem with long-term care or how the structure uh, in government has, uh, has uh, helped or hindered our long-term care system. We had a Liberal government that for 15 years did not prioritize long-term care, left it on its knees and vulnerable to what happened when the pandemic hit. We were not surprised. We've long wondered whether um, this minister would be in it for the long run. So I don't think it was a surprise to stakeholders, but I think it's a surprise to seniors and people who were just getting to know this minister. Obviously, we can't force someone to uh, run for re-election, but there is a heavy burden right now, and it would be good if he would continue to shoulder that burden while we are in such a dire crisis. Seniors advocates say it would have been nice if Rod Phillips stuck around to honour the duties of his portfolio as Ontario's long-term care minister. But we learned late this afternoon that's not going to happen. Rod Phillips announcing today he's calling it quits and leaving the public sector next month. His departure comes amid yet another crisis in our long-term care homes with more than half of them now in outbreak and COVID-19 infections at an all-time high. For more on what impact Minister Phillips' departure has on seniors in long-term care and their families and staff as well, we welcome to CP24 tonight long-term care advocate Vivian Stamatopoulos and the executive director of Ontario Health Coalition, Natalie Mara. Thanks to you both for making time for us tonight. Vivian, let's start with you. Did you see this coming? I, I did not. I really did not. This was a curveball for me. Um, I, it's unfortunate. I, um, it's unfortunate. What do you make of the timing of this and how challenging the next at least month will be knowing that he's on his way out? Well, I mean, listen, I have not been um, happy, as many people know, um, with the performance during Omicron. I've been very critical that, you know, uh, under his leadership, or really lack thereof over the Christmas break, over the holidays, um, you know, there was the opportunity to take proactive action, which was really vital to do in the early weeks of December. Um, but it didn't happen. So I, I was very upset about that. And I knew that if we didn't take those, those key actionable steps that we would be in the situation we are right now where 6,000 staff and residents currently have COVID. I, I mean, I, I just never thought we would be here again. Um, and it's disappointing to know that he will be leaving, uh, you know, in the next month when, when I don't think we will be out of this by then, and, and it'll be very difficult acclimating a new minister to this role at this time. Yeah, so let's talk more about the situation in long-term care homes today. Uh, Natalie, this news today of Philip's resignation comes as uh, a group of healthcare organizations, including your own, is now calling on the government to address what we now know is a huge staffing crisis in long-term care homes. How worried are you about this uh, going unaddressed at this point, especially now that there's going to be a change of hands? Yeah, you know, it's not an exaggeration to call what's happening both in long-term care and in hospitals and home care a catastrophe. Like, it's beyond crisis. It was in crisis before. It's like nothing we've ever seen. And, um, and we've now seen, you know, the worst. Uh, there, the staffing has collapsed in a number of homes. The, there is, there are no measures. You know, even before Rod Phillips resigned today, there was no leadership happening, neither from the premier nor from the long-term care minister, to actually get boots on the ground in the hospitals, in the long-term care homes, to provide the care. We're hearing from residents that haven't had a bath since before Christmas. It's January the 14th. Uh, people are going without feeding. You know, the, the staff might have time to see them in the morning, give them their meds. They don't have time for bathing. They don't have time to brush their teeth. You know, they don't have time to do anything. They see no one all day. The food is put down in front of them. No one there to feed them. In many, many cases, I'm not, this is no exaggeration. It's a humanitarian crisis. And Rod Phillips or no Rod Phillips, someone needs to step in because people are declining. It's irreversible harm to their health. Uh, they're left on isolation, you know, in a way that actually it's not even allowed by international law. You know, there's law that protects prisoners 
from uh, solitary confinement 24 7 which is happening to long-term care residents so not okay we need emergency measures and nothing is happening i don't really care who the health minister um, who the long-term care minister is as long as they do their job and are focused on the job i was not a fan of rod phillips did not think he did very much frankly and he smoothed the way for further privatization so not a big fan but you know someone needs to be in there right away and uh, the premier needs to take some leadership and public health leaders in this province need to take some leadership to address the crisis. There is no question our seniors have been left behind in the last 22 months. I want to share some of the stats from today with our viewers. So they can get an idea as to what the numbers are and what we're talking about here because we are in this crisis situation. So as of this morning, 52% of the long-term care homes in this province are in an outbreak. Yes, 11 of them, 11% of them don't have resident cases, but there are a lot of staff cases too. 2146 resident cases, more than 3800 staff cases. And I went through the data I counted since January 1st, 60 seniors have died in long-term care from COVID. 36 of them in the last 4 days alone. So Vivian, if we're hearing from Natalie, some seniors aren't having baths since Christmas. There's no one to feed yeah. them. Their family members are not being allowed inside sometimes to, to care for them. What do we do? How do we make sure that we don't wait another month till a new minister comes in? We've got to take care of the situation now. You know, I try to remain hopeful, but I'll be honest. Uh, I don't know how much we can do right now. Uh, you know, the, the, the time to act has passed. I, I wish we could have a, you know, a <laughs> go back in time travel machine. But we don't have that. And unfortunately, we have to sit here and wait for the worst to come. And, and it's happening. We're in it right now. We're seeing it. And, and I don't really know what can be done. We can't just, you know, they, they missed the opportunity to have recruitment drives like Quebec did to get more workers in here ahead of, you know, forget the second wave, the, the third, fourth, now fifth wave. And we have staffing shortages everywhere. So we can't even rely on the rapid re response teams that we used to have and rely on before to come in and assist in long-term care, which were usually made up of, you know, hospital staff and community health care professionals, because everybody is now dealing with this. And we don't have, there are no health care workers to spare. So we're in a, a really dark time. I, I don't think we've ever been in such a precarious situation. The only saving grace is that, you know, thank God for the vaccine mandate that we're not having the mass deaths that we had in the previous waves. That's the only, you know, shining spot in this. But at the same time, I too have been documenting. And since I first, you know, put the, the signal up to Rod Phillips that you got to pay attention to this, long-term care, you know, outbreaks are increasing. On December 7th, we have indeed lost 66 residents. And if you pay attention, that, that number is snowballing over the past week and two weeks. So the vast majority of those deaths are in the past, you know, 10 days. So it, it is getting worse very quickly. And we also know that forget the deaths from COVID. We know many of these residents are declining and, and, and will die and, and have been dying from neglect, from lack of staffing to properly, you know, provide medications to feed these residents, to catch things like bed sores before they go septic, to catch UTIs before they become deadly. I mean, there's such a level of negligence operating right now because of chronic understaffing that has hit a new unpre unprecedented level th that at this point, you know, you just kind of throw your hands up in the air, which I don't like to do because I don't know what can be done right now to fix this apart from the things I begged that they did six weeks ago. Yeah, we know staffing is a big issue. Uh, Natalie, something Vivian just mentioned was that vaccine mandate, and we do have to credit uh, Minister Phillips for bringing that in in the long-term care sector. Uh, but despite having that vaccine mandate, you know, most people now in this sector are double or triple vaxxed. Why do you think we're still seeing such high rates uh, of cases in these settings? Yeah, that was the best thing he did, frankly, uh, of his tenure. But, um, you know, the reason, partly, is because the staff still don't have N95 masks. Like, if you can believe it, they they have now confined 75,000 long-term care residents to their rooms, um, almost all of them confined actually to their rooms, which might be 12 by 12, 24 hours a day. No 
um, interaction between them, total isolation. If the staff have any time to stop in, that's that's what they see. You know, they might have essential caregivers, some of them, who can come in one at a time, et cetera, but very, very limited um, socialization, stimulation, and so on, a very limited care and activity. Um, and at the same time, in the same homes with outbreaks, there are all kinds of staff without N95 masks. Clearly, Omicron is airborne. There is no question why they could possibly have staff without N95 masks in long-term care, given what is happening. 6,000 people in the sector infected with COVID-19, you know, deaths that are mounting day by day. It's just ludicrous. It's indefensible. It is a moral failure. It's a healthcare failure, and it could be changed tomorrow. So there's no question there are measures that could be taken. They need to call in the military. There's no question. We need boots on the ground. You can't leave people to starve. That just can't happen in this country. They can launch very quickly a recruitment drive uh, for staff from across healthcare to get into the hospitals and long-term care. Everyone that can volunteer from primary care, community care, and so on, into home care, long-term care, um, hospital care to save people's lives. Absolutely. If it were wartime, we would do that. This is wartime. We're at war against a virus that is killing people, you know, so do it. It's about leadership and political will at this point. Uh, you know, there are some solutions here. There, it's not the case that there are none and they need to be put into place and they need to be put into place immediately. Yeah, I was going to say, change today requires will. Vivian, we're up against the clock here. I know you tweeted out that you've reached out to Minister Rod Phillips to help, I guess, him stick handle the next month. What do you say to him? Uh, you know where to find me. You have my phone number. You know, you did reach out a few times in the beginning, but I haven't heard from you in a while. And, and you know I'm always here to help. I might be tough in my advocacy, but it's never personal. And I'll be like this with every minister, and the next minister should be ready for me too, because I'll never stop. But I'm always here, and I always have solutions, and I'm always available to help. So listen to us. Reach out. We're here. And thanks to you both for lending your advocacy to CP24 tonight. Vivian Stamatopoulos, Natalie Mayer, appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.